Thanks very much, Stephen. Hello, everyone. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Great. Um, I'm Cliff Redden. I'm the uh, Information Services Manager at the Nelson Provincial Museum. Um, I look after our website and everything digital. Um, I've had the pleasure of coming to the NDF uh, for a number of years now, and I always find it really interesting and really engaging. Um, but something that I've noticed um, over the recent years is the, that the focus of the conference has shifted from digitisation and digital content more towards delivery and engagement. Now, don't get me wrong, all that stuff is fantastic, and I love it. Um, you know, social media, web mashups, um, mobile apps, everything is fantastic. So many wonderful ways and innovative ways to engage with our audiences. Much like this photograph, it's very sexy stuff. <laughs> Digitisation, on the other hand, is not sexy. And I began to wonder if perhaps digitisation had simply become old fashioned. Um, and it raised the question in my mind, was digitisation still relevant? I'd be interested to know what you think. Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about the Glass Plate Negative Project, our good old fashioned digitisation project. Um, first I'm going to give you a wee bit of background about the museum, and then I'm going to tell you how we transition from the analog world into the digital, uh, and, and how that was necessary before we could conduct the Glass Plate Negative Project. Then I'm going to talk to you a thing about a thing I call digital bounty. What do I mean by that? Digital bounty is the rich digital collection that is resulting from the project. And at the end, uh, for being such a good, good audience, we're going to have some cake. Uh, Nelson Provincial Museum is the leading primary uh, heritage organisation in the Nelson Tasman districts. We operate two public venues. Town Acre 445 in Central Nelson is our education and exhibition centre. And we have a research library and archive at Isle Park Stoke. Uh, this is where we hold the collections and where we do our projects. Uh, we have an extensive regional collection, um, the crown jewel of which is our photographic collection. Recognised nationally as a significant uh, collection, um, it's estimated at one and a half million images. Um, it's almost a complete photographic record of early Nelson through to the present day. At the heart of the collection are the Tyree Studio and F.N. Jones collections. Uh, it's made up of film negative and glass plate. Of the glass plates, we have 150,000 in total. Um, and they range in size from quarter plate uh, right up to 12 by 15 inch uh, plates. And it's a beautiful, beautiful collection. Um, up until 2006, access to the collection was limited to file prints. They were contained in these grey boxes under subject category. Um, so it's very, very limited. Um, all our reproductions were through wet uh, dark cream processes, and we had no online access or catalogue. Uh, so we were faced, like a lot of institutions, with challenges. Um, we had an increasing demand for, um, for access to the collection, um, and of course preservation of that collection is of the utmost importance. Um, and for anyone that works in the museum, it's like working um, in a relationship with someone with a dual personality. On the one hand, we want to lock things up, keep them safe, keep them in dark storage. On the other, we want to engage with our audience, we want to share our history. Um, so to the rescue, digitisation. Um, we, uh, in 2006 we conducted a digitisation pilot project. Uh, we looked into digitisation best practice um, and armed with the lessons that we learned from other institutions, we went about <coughs> learning and making our own. Digitisation is not a perfect science. Um, the idea was to establish a framework for doing digitisation projects. So what did we do? We created a, a standards-based digitisation studio, um, officially referred to as the Grey Bunker, um, and we started off flatbed scanning. We then moved to digital photography, and we upgraded our IT infrastructure from home PCs <laughs> running Server 2000 to a fully integrated um, Blade um, server environment with our very own um, Web server. It was happy days for me. 
Uh, we also implemented the Vernon Collection Management System as our collections database and the Vernon Web Browser as our online catalog, which we call Collections Online. Okay, um, the Glass Plate Negative Project um, is funded by uh, the grants, uh, by both public donation and uh, public grant money. Um, we, we had actually, it was a requirement, a, a collection services requirement to move glass plates from wooden shelving into steel cabinets to better protect them. And we thought, what a fantastic opportunity to digitise them on the way through. And so we set about doing initially a time and motion study um, to see if it was feasible. And under the results of that study, we were able to convince our uh, governance board to give us the green light to seek uh, further funding and extend the project. Uh, so we were, able, we were successful in that. And we uh, were able to employ staff, um, purchase equipment, and set about the task of digitising those 150,000 plates. Uh, the, the project's been running for uh, just over two years now, and we've digitised and relocated 69,000 plates, and 34,000 of those are now available online. What did we do? Okay, the, um, the project, I have three, I have three um, paid staff who work um, part-time on the um, project. They work in pairs, um, and for simplicity, um, the roles, oh, there, there are two roles. Um, the role on the left, um, illustrated by Errol there, um, is what we call the capture, and the role on the right, illustrated by Ian, um, is retrieval. Errol's job is to capture up all the data. We use Excel for our data capture, uh, because it's really quick. Um, and uh, we have been able to make use of the abbreviations and autocorrection feature in Excel um, to speed up that, that process. So for example, SPW, if you type that in, results to Studio Portrait of Water, and we have a lot of those. Um, and, uh, and so one of the other things that we capture is the condition of the plate going through. So for example, EL will resolve to emulsion lifting. Um, the card on the um, left hand side there um, is an innovation that the team came up with by themselves, um, but it's fantastic. Um, all it does is reference the plaque, the four corners and the four sides, and they're able to use the shortcuts that they've developed um, to quickly enter in um, the condition of the plate. Um, so that data capture is, is great, it's fantastic. Um, we capture um, name, uh, title, um, description, uh, catalogers notes uh, the collection it comes from, um, the old location, and the new location it's going to, plus of course the condition of the plate. Uh, we capture the image. We capture the images directly across the server to a storage server, uh, so there's no cart, no, no need to download. It's directly where we want it to be. Uh, we capture them as camera raw, um, and those, for the time being, are going to be our preservation masters. Um, Errol, who is doing the data capture, is also the photographer, uh, using the mouse, uh, using the camera software um, to capture it. Now the reason, uh, we, we take two photographs, we take a picture of the enclosure um, as well as the plate itself. And as you can see, the reason we do that is there's an awful lot of information written on the enclosure. Um, now we don't have time to capture all the cataloging information there, but by photographing it, we can go back to it any time and reference it. Um, the enclosures are captured as low res JPEGs and the plates as high res um, capital files. Uh, Ian's job is to retrieve, um, and of course, collection safety is the most important thing. Um, so we have padded boxes, we handle um, movement of those plates as carefully as we can. Um, his job is to retrieve them from the wooden shelves um, and then bring them over and position them uh, ready for, camera, for the camera to capture viral. And once the capture process has gone through, um, Ian will then put them into designated uh, locations in the steel cabinets. Just go back one. Um, the steel cabinets are lined with uh, um, preservation um, foam. Uh, ether foam, um, and we use acid-free card as separators. They're very tightly packed um, to, to stop any kind of movement should there be uh, an earthquake or, or the like. 
uh, Matt Gebhardt, Gebhardt Grevitt. He's one of the project team. Um, but he also happens to be a very talented photographer. Um, and he has been using the images that he's helped to digitise in a art project that he's been working on for the last year. Um, and I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Um, for, he works an extra day a week as um, the post-production technician. And it's Gebhardt's job to turn the camera raw files into modified master tips. Uh, so we um, should have mentioned before we capture the plate um, emulsion side up, so we avoid any damage to the emulsion. Um, so his job is to um, invert the plate um, in terms of black and white, and also flip the um, uh, his orientation. Um, now it would take him an age to do every single image as he went through. So we make use of um, actions and batch processing in Adobe Photoshop and Bridge to do all that hard repetitive task uh, work. So we have a PC with all that set up and we run it in an iteratively through a, through a folder. So the next day Gephardt can come back and work on um, the TIFFs um, and he modifies them to be aesthetically pleasing. Which is what that is about. Uh, then we have a process of converting the Excel data um, and importing it into Venom. Um, it has to be verified first by the collection, Photographic Collection Manager, um, and then it is important to get into Vernon um, and the images attached, um, and then it is exported to our Collections Online uh, website. Now the project was going along at a swimming rate. It was fantastic. It had a momentum of its own. It um, had far exceeded our expectations. Um, then on the 22nd of January uh, this year, we had some really bad news. Um, as a result of a detailed engineering report into the seismic integrity of our building, um, we were told to get out because we were earthquake prone. Uh, so we had to um, close the doors to both staff and public and relocate to um, different premises, um, but we couldn't have collection with us. Uh, so we thought, uh, until a, a remedi remediation plan had been put in place, we thought that would be a matter of weeks. Nine months later, we finally had a solution. But unfortunately, we had to suspend the project over that time. Uh, we literally had to prop up the building. Um, and it's been very, very trying. But um, I'm very pleased to say that in mid-October last month, um, we were able to get the project off again. Um, I believe that we should always celebrate milestones, even if it's a public acknowledgement of the job well done so far. When we got to our 50,000th plate, um, which is, represents a third of the way through, um, we did a story online um, and told the story of uh, the sample. Eldridge, sorry. Um, and uh, we don't know anything about her other than her name. Um, but anyway, we wrote a story about her and, and the fact that we, we were a third of the way through. And uh, Collections um, Trust CEO Nick Paul picked up on that story. And in an interview with Catherine Ryan on the 19th show, he said it was a great example of a technology opening up collections so that people could engage with their past, uh, which was very flattering. And um, good on you, Nick. Um, which leads me into um, talking about Gebhardt again. Um, this is Gebhardt's project. He is doing a, um, a series of um, images for the World, World, World War 100 project. And what he did is he took um, images from our collection, of, from Ephraim Jones' collection, of the, of the Tapuera military camp. Um, Tapuera is about 50 kilometres out of Nelson, and uh, soldiers trained there prior to departure to overseas during World War I. Um, Gebhard walked around uh, paddocks of Tapuera, um, comparing hills and geological features, until he was satisfied he found the right location, and he took a photograph of it and with the aid of Photoshop, uh, created these amazing augmented reality photo montages. Um, it's a really good example of what I was talking about earlier in terms of digital bounty. Get part of stone to harvest um, that bounty that we are creating. Uh, another project I'd like to tell you about is the Heart Project. Um, it's uh, Heritage Education Augmented Reality Tours. And it's a um, mobile app based on a paper-based education um, program that we have with our regional schools. 
where they walk around Nelson and using a smart device like an iPad or a mobile phone, it will overlay a historic photograph on this uh, on the scene that they see in front of them. Um, it's the brainchild of David Brighton, uh, who's a second year um, NMIT student, um, and it's a collaborative project between ourselves, um, the Nelson City Public Libraries, Nelson City Council, and NMIT themselves, Nelson Moore and Student Technology. Um, and we, of course, are able to access our own collection, um, and it's going to be a fantastic resource for our own W100, WW100 project. Um, okay, cake time. Um, now I wanted to um, to talk about this idea of digital bounty more, and the easiest way to do this is to do it in an analogy. Um, so if we think of digital content, and that's the whole shooting match, that's digitization, collections, um, engagement, social media, the whole works, is a cake. Um, then the uh, flour, eggs, milk and butter, um, you would liken them to our collection objects, the raw materials of a cake. Um, they stay in storage, uh, ready, waiting for us to use them for something special. The work of digitisation is like the mixing of the ingredients. It's hard, tedious work, but the resulting cake mixture can be used to bake into something special. The cake is like the digital bounty. It's like our digital collections, but as a cake that first comes out of the oven, isn't much to look at, and you could easily walk past it without noticing it. But if you were able to sink your teeth into it, it would be very delicious. So not until we ice it and put it on display do we start to attract people in. And this can be likened to social media, web apps, um, all that really interesting, exciting engagement stuff. Once it's iced, people take notice and everyone wants to have a bite. The, point, the, the very important point is this, everybody likes cake. And it's the same fit with digitisation. The, the more cake you have, the more people want it. So the more we do, as institutions, the more we digitise, the more cake we can make. And that way we get, give everyone what they want and what they like. Thank you. project that I'm working on. Um, at the moment, no. Um, through our collections on webs on, sorry, our collections online website, you're able to use the images for research. Um, no worries at all. You know, if you're researching, just go for your life. Um, we do, uh, if you want to reproduce it though, we do require you to um, go through our reproduction process um, and tell us why you're using it, what you want to use it for, etc. And there's also a um, if it's for a commercial use, there is a fee. Generally speaking, if it's for a research project or non-profit, um, we, we don't charge a reproduction fee. Um, but yes, at the moment, the reproduction rights are very tight. Um, personally, I would like to see us move towards Creative Commons licensing, particularly on our out-of-copyright material, um, but we're not there yet. So, Yeah, yeah. Just describe how you manage that. Yeah, thanks, Dave. That's um, it's a really good point. Um, we, um, it wasn't part of a, of a grant. Um, it was um, capital expenditure. Um, just to give you a bit of background, we're a CCO. Um, we have two local authorities that uh, are 
um, shareholders in, in us. We're a, we're a charitable trust. Um, and, um, and essentially they bulk fund us. Um, and we then are able to set our own direction. And there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages to that. One of the advantages is that we have autonomy over our IT infrastructure. Um, and, um, and so essentially uh, we put in the money to create the, to put in the um, late centre. Um, but it meant that we had total control over it. Um, and so one of the things I mentioned is that we have our own web server. Um, and uh, the advantage of that is that we can put on as many of our images as we want without having to worry about um, hosting cost. Um, and at 34,000 and growing, um, at the presentation earlier talking about $600 um, a month for hosting for um, video data, you know, we couldn't afford to do that. Um, but we can with our own web server. Um, and um, it's just the cost of bandwidth. Um, and we've got an extremely good partnership with um, a local ISP. Does that answer your question, Jack? Yep. Sure. Any other questions? <coughs> All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Cliff.